So after that, like I graduated and, and I was just trying to hustle, just do different things. Like I started a drop shipping store, didn't work. I, I tried day trading that didn't work. What I mean didn't work, I'm talking about like I'm losing thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, like just trying to just figure it out, you know, uh, almost did Amazon FBA. Thank God I didn't do that because <laughs> the startup to buy all that inventory and then basically pray that you sell it is, yeah, it, it's, it's a big commitment. Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting show, the About That Wallet podcast, where we help you build strong financial habits so that you can have that confidence when you're talking about money, spending money, and even making money. And I have an awesome guest that's coming on that is going to be talking about, you know, starting the business, how he got started, and actually how he takes brands to that new level, and also take himself to that new level to help the other people in the world. And I have to bring on Miles young blood how you doing today sir man i'm feeling good i'm feeling great i can't complain how, how you doing today uh it's a it's a saturday <laughs> it's another day man i know another day another podcast that's why i've been putting on my instagram story man yeah and you've been doing quite a bit in the podcast realm i want to congratulate you on you. your stride and keep moving beyond you know the typical three episodes that most people have out there so <laughs> we appreciate it man like they they always say that 90 percent of podcasters don't make it past episode three and then 90 percent of them don't make it past episode i think it was like 20 or something like that and uh, i hit i think episode 22 or 23 like the other day so congrats picking it out appreciate it appreciate it yeah how far do you want to take this thing man so I want to take it pretty far. I, I, I really do. I, I really want Beyond Ordinary to really be one of those ones. And for those that don't know that I have a, uh, I have a podcast, it's called Beyond Ordinary. Uh, it's connecting with great people, doing great things, inspire us to do the same. And it highlights uh, a lot about entrepreneurship uh, and the different facets of entrepreneurship, right? So I, I did an interview with somebody last week he was a he he was a, a prom party promoter and he does that full time you know what i mean like i've known him for for a very long time i've known him for like five years so i've kind of seen his evolution which is why i wanted him on the show uh but you know some people might not see that party promotion being a viable income and he was able to do it uh, so i have stock traders poker players like you know a lot of non-traditional uh ways of making money and that's when i want to show people and inspire people to you know, do something outside of the regular nine to five. So to get to your original question in terms of where I'm trying to take it, I'm really trying to have my show be, you know, one of those ones really like a modern wisdom podcast or like a diary of a CEO podcast, like a really very high um, quality podcast with high quality guests. Uh, and that's just going to come with time and putting in the reps and uh, just, yeah, that's it. Just hard work, putting in the reps. Yeah, because I mean, I saw you've been putting in the reps and actually being able to meet you for the first time at Podcast Movement. I mean, it was awesome to see you there and making your connections, making your rounds and meetings up with some of the great podcasters that are out there. Was there anybody that stuck out the most to you that you met when you're at Podcast Movement? Did anybody stick out the most? I mean, it was just so many great people that I, I met. There wasn't anyone in particular. Uh, I know I met this one guy uh, named Taco. He actually lives out in D.C. And I remember like me and him were chopping it up. He has his own show and he was telling me that, hey, like I shoot at the studio. You can, you know, um, you know, check him out. And that's actually the studio where I, I've been shooting at recently. Uh, and it's actually around the corner from my house, too. Nice. So, like, it's, it's, it's very convenient. So really just making those connections. And that's one thing that I loved about podcast movement is I was able to make a lot of connections. Like I know a lot of people go to these conferences and you might, you know, be there, talk to somebody. And then once you leave the conference, like, you know, you don't really speak to them, but that really isn't the case. I, I met up with um, this, this woman named Bree at Vid Summit and we've been, uh, which was like, what, I think two weeks after that, we chopped it up. We still talk on Instagram. I uh, met Jamal. He's actually about to come on my show to talk about, you know, mental health and corporate and stuff like that. And there's like some other people that I've been meaning to to tap in with um, over the coming days. Uh, I met another guy named Corey. He actually put me on in touch with his uh, podcast network. 
uh, the the owner of his podcast network. So I got a call with a call with them. So I, I, I've really been just uh, blessed and fortunate to be able to meet a lot of uh, quality individuals uh, through podcasting, and that's probably been the the best part and most rewarding part for real. Yeah, because I mean, you started this thing not too long ago, and but in twenty twenty you finished and coming through the pandemic, but also your dad was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. What made you follow his footsteps in that entrepreneurship? Man, just be, seeing my dad just be able to have his own schedule and not necessarily live a traditional nine to five life really helped me see that there's other ways of making money. There's other ways of living. So I was like, okay, that's what I wanted to do. So for the longest time, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I went to school for business. I graduated at Howard University with a degree in, in finance. Unfortunately, I found out that it was corporate finance, which is not what I really wanted to do. And by the time I realized, I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought this was going to be. I was like halfway through my junior year already. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just stick it out. So after that, like I graduated and, and I was just trying to hustle, just do different things. Like I started a drop shipping store, didn't work. I, I tried day trading that didn't work. Well, I mean, didn't work. I'm talking about like, I'm losing thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. like just trying to just figure it out. You know, uh, almost did Amazon FBA. Thank God I didn't do that because <laughs> the startup to buy all that inventory and then basically pray that you sell it is, yeah, it, it's, it's a big commitment. Uh, but I didn't do that. And so what I ended up starting, I started my own agency to help influencers and content creators, podcasters, um, expand their reach and brand through short form content. So a lot of my clients, they've been on YouTube for a very long time. And when YouTube came out with YouTube shorts, they didn't necessarily know what to do. And so I was like, okay, I could help them repurpose all this content. So I go in and I take the long form content, cut it up, put it into shorts. I have a team that is really good at what they do. Uh, and then we post it all for them on all platforms because it, you never want to pigeonhole yourself to just, you know, one platform. And that's what I do um, <laughs> for myself. I'm sure you've seen uh, my Instagram reels. I, I post those every single day uh, and, it, and it's really helped grow my channel and my Instagram. I know I, I'm starting small now, but those compounding effects after, you know, a year, two years of doing it, it it's, it's going to be incredible. So, yeah. And one of the things that I'm curious of this. Why did you take the digital route for entrepreneurship instead of the physical route? Like how your dad does. That's a great question. That's a great question. So it's, <laughs> it's 2024. You know what I mean? Like it's so many, we have so many different ways that we can make money outside of the traditional way. And what I didn't want to do was pigeonhole myself and, uh, to a, a particular location. So one idea I actually was thinking, what was thinking about was doing like an ATM uh, business. And I remember I ran it by one of my friends and he was telling me, he was like, bro, like, ATM, like you could probably make some good money. But the thing is, you don't want to have to, I would have to get a car. I'd have to, you know, go to these different locations. Obviously vandalism, I live in the city. So they're, I, I guarantee they're going to get be vandalized and stuff like that. So I, I was like, you know what? Let me just uh, let me f find a way to make money online. So, and by doing that, it allows me to hire staff that isn't in my local area. So I would I would have never been able to hire the great staff that I have now if I had a, a local business. You know, I'd be I'd be kind of handcuffed, and I didn't want to necessarily handcuff my business. So. That's a smart way of doing it. And plus, you came out during the pandemic, so everybody was already coming through with that innovative like hey it's okay to do everything remotely it's instead of the face-to-face -face brick and mortar style um companies so when you came out like even the job market during that time frame was all remote so you know working in person is that something that you still work remotely or is it still this is your business full-time so I, I don't do my business full time. Um, not yet. Uh, I, that's going to come very soon. But I have been I always tell people that graduating in 2020 was a blessing and a curse in disguise. And the reason why I say that is because what 
Well, one, like it does suck be that I didn't get my graduation. I never walked across the stage. I, was, I put in four years at Howard, dragged me through mm -hmm. the administration, all, all the whole nine yard just for, you know, March to come and have them put me off campus. I was also pledging at the time we were supposed to have our, uh, you know, our, our day where we come out, show the campus who we are. And I was looking forward to it because I was like, damn, like I'm finally going to get my time back. Like, and, and it's going to be my senior year. And I'm not going to lie. Like when I went home, I just... Man, it, it it was almost like a gut punch. Like, damn, like th this, like I'm on lockdown. I was supposed to have the funnest time of my life. I didn't get to say bye to to a lot of my friends. Even to this day, there are people that I haven't mm -hmm. seen since like I graduated. But the reason why I say that it's uh, it was a blessing is because since then, I, I think I started working that like summer, like June, July ish, and from that summer to today. I've been fully remote. I've never had to go into a corporate office. The only time I've ever had to go into a corporate office is if they're like, hey, oh, we need you to like do fingerprints or whatever, or, oh, I need a new laptop. So I went to to the facility and they gave me a new laptop and stuff like that. But in terms of someone being like, hey, Miles, we need you to be in the office so that way you can do work. I've never had to do that. And that has allowed me so much flexibility to be able to do my business, do my podcast. Like it would be almost virtually impossible for me to do what I do now if I had to go into a corporate office. So yeah, that makes sense. So now that you got your strategies, your SLPs and um, your processes that are set up so mm -hmm. that you can actually maintain the remote aspect when it comes to helping out like your friends, or something like that. Are your friends also doing this? Because like they say, you're a reflection of the five people that you hang around. Are your mm -hmm. friends also in entrepreneurship or they just stick with the nine to five? Uh, so I, I really only have one close friend that uh, has, well, I, I, one of my fraternity brothers, he's a photographer and he honestly is, is really good and he's, he's made some decent money doing that. Uh, but I, I've had conversations with him. He says that he still wants to go to law school and stuff like that. And he doesn't want to, you know, go full time as a photographer. I've been trying to push him um, over. The year. I'll, I'll probably get to him one of these days. But I do have a friend that also has his own content agency um, helping influencers, YouTubers and stuff like that. So me and him been kind of bouncing ideas off of each other, talking about, you know, hey, like, like, what do you think about this outreach group? He literally texted me yesterday talking about, hey, like, I was supposed to have a meeting with this person. Like, this was the text, like, you know what I'm saying? just bouncing ideas off each other but i will say that um it's just it, it, it it's hard it, it's hard entrepreneurship is hard and there's not too many people doing it and I, i've been telling myself like right now i'm kind of in what i consider my lonely chapter because i feel like a lot of the things that you know i've been going through over the last year like i feel like a lot of people can't just can't relate uh and yeah. i'm just uh, i've, I've kind of just had to make peace with the fact that I'm not going to be able to relate to a, a, a lot of people. I don't have like a traditional lifestyle that a lot of people do. I really wish I could just, you know, close my laptop at, at five o'clock and then kind of just like chill for the rest of the day. But like, no, if, if, if I'm not doing my nine to five, then, then I'm doing con then I'm helping my editors do content for the, for the podcast, booking guests, stuff like that. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm trying to find new clients for my business is, is literally a 24, four, seven thing for sure. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> I can relate to you because podcasting, I'm always thinking about who's the next guest. What I'm going to put for the show notes. And as we talked offline a little bit, talking about the blogging piece of it, trying to add that extra content in there. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, like you said, the short form content is becoming key because Instagram just now allowing people to upload, what, three minutes worth of content now for the Real. reels. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, I definitely noticed that. Yeah. And so since you've been doing this for a while, SEO is kind of one of those hot topics. What is something that people can do to kind of increase their SEO presence on the short form? <laughs> so, you know, I have somebody that pitches me SEO almost like every other week. <laughs> on the table, yeah. So fact, literally somebody like did it like did those send me a screenshot and all this other stuff. Um, but what I use, I use vidIQ. Uh, I, I've been meaning to put on my to-do list to kind of like utilize that. Um, so I've, I've really just been using vidIQ slash ChatGBT, like using different AI, AI softwares for, you know, descriptions and SEO. Um, in terms of sh doing it specifically for short form content, I, I would say SEO is mainly for the long form content because 
shorts like the bulk like i would say 80 to 90 percent of how your short is going to get discovered is just from the shorts feed like the browse uh browse feed so it's more so not necessarily about let me make this title so optimized it's more so making sure that the first three seconds of your video hooks the the watchers and you get that you know 90 100 percent um retention on, on your shorts that, that that's the main key for for the short form content yeah. What platform seems to be your favorite? Platform use seems to be my favorite in terms of what just just posting or being on or just posting, being on, whatever. Like because you most people say, like, oh, maybe I should start my business and start doing videos on Instagram. Some people say, let me start doing LinkedIn. Let me see if I could do TikTok or um even X or even just Facebook solely. Though so, out of those different platforms of the big ones, right? Which one is your favorite? Uh, well, I'll, I guess this has to be my favorite by default because I use it the most is uh, Instagram. And I think if I had to literally only pick one platform and grow off of it, probably be Instagram. And mainly because not only does it have the short form content, but you could also like DM people on there as well. Uh, it, it's just such a shareable and personable platform. Uh, they got they have stories as well so i would uh i uh, instagram's definitely been uh my bread and butter and it's not necessarily a surprise that instagram right now is my second biggest platform behind my youtube uh, but one thing i've been trying to utilize recently was is uh it's actually linkedin i've been mm -hmm. uh, posting my content over over on linkedin and one thing that i liked about linkedin i gotta check to see if i think it it's for the mobile too is uh you they have like a clickable link so i'll put the short and then i'll yeah. also put a, a, a link to to the full content for anybody that wants to to um to go over there and i've had i've had a linkedin for a very long time too so i was like you know there's like if i have a linkedin with i think like what 800 connections i might as well utilize that and uh and i'm glad i did because not that i literally just started getting on linkedin probably like last week and uh one of I, and there's because I'm at Howard, anybody that got Howard in their bio, I just accept them automatically. You know what I mean? So there's plenty yeah. of people that like I have like in my network that I don't necessarily like personally know like that. But this uh this one this one girl, she was like, Hey, like you should probably interview like so and so. And you know, I was like, Okay, cool. So I went to his profile. I'm like, Oh, he's cool. He talks about like, you know, sales like funnels, sales funnels and utilizing AI and stuff, and that's something that I'm interested in. I, you know, tried funnels myself, not that great at it. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> Let me let me have him on the podcast. So like that 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 once that happened, I was like, oh, you know, there's some value being on LinkedIn. So let me do that. And also, um, a lot of my guests are, are kind of older. Like they, and so when I like a lot of them don't really have like Instagram. So I've been just like I so saw I've been getting back on LinkedIn, adding them on LinkedIn, you know, tagging them and stuff like that, hoping, um, you know, them reposting uh, the the you know the promotion of the episode and stuff too. So uh, I look forward to seeing how how LinkedIn goes uh, moving forward for sure. Yeah, um, one of the things that as we slide on over to the third segment, which is the futures, and. One of the things that you're constantly doing is trying out different things and not giving up. But when it comes to giving up, you know when to quit. How do you know when you had enough of trying something before you move on to something else? I would say from a general standpoint that, and it, this isn't even necessarily my words. I, I follow this guy named Alex Ramosi, great business content and he said that you should only give up if something fundamentally changes and what he means by that is like if you he gave the example of if you aren't trying to like scale newspapers you should and you see that the newspaper market is actually declining by like 25 percent year over year just as people go digital and that's a fundamental change in the market so you should probably pivot so that's a general answer now in terms of me uh, so I actually originally, uh, <laughs> I actually finally made a post about this on, on, on Instagram, uh, for a national podcast. I didn't originally intend going to 2024, wanting to do a podcast. I was going to do a whole bunch of other stuff and I was actually going to do pivot business models because my business model is done for you and uh, I want to do a little more done with you. So I paid for this program with thousands of dollars, whatever. Uh, I was going to like help accountants for some weird reason or whatever. And part of that program, they wanted me to like run ads and do content toward, with those ads. I'm like, All right, cool, whatever. And um, 
they was they, they they were like hey like you should probably like inter do podcast interviews with your clients so that way like you could use that social proof so i was like all right cool whatever well, let me give this a try so literally the first episode on my podcast i did it on zoom this is when i was still trying to do that accounting you know thing or whatever and uh i wasn't really i would say that i wasn't really taking the podcast seriously because i was doing it for that program it wasn't like i was actually trying to scale podcasts right but one day I was, um, again, shout out to, to Alex Ramosi. He was talking about, okay, like if what you want happens, happens, then what? And what I interpreted him meant by that is like, if like the best case scenario happens, like what does that look like? And so I was like, all right, cool. So let me stop and think. I was like, all right, well, I'll be making a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Six, seven figures, working with accountants. I'd be talking to these type of people, da, da, da. And I had to stop and think. I'm like, okay, is this really what I want to do? And I was like, nah, it's not. And I was like, hmm, you know, doing this podcast was, was kind of fun. I'm like, what if I, instead of like having the podcast be like this little one off on the side, not really serious. And what if I actually like trying to take podcasting seriously? So that's when I decided to, to, uh, to pivot. And oh, actually, the, a, a main reason why I uh, pivoted from that done with you to, to just going into podcasting is because another, entrepreneur who i respect who is his name is sam ovens he said he recently shifted his position on what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur he said that he used to always think that it's a discipline 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 all you have to do if you just have 10 out of 10 discipline you will succeed and he's recently pivoted on that point not necessarily saying that you don't need discipline but he was saying that you also have to have that passion and that passion is what's going to get you through tough times and that was the main reason why I pivoted from doing that is because I would wake up every single day trying to make these like you like Instagram reels, YouTube shorts for accountants. And I didn't really care to do that. Like it was literally a dread. Like it was to the point where like I would get up in the day and I would know that I would have to make that content. And I would just be so sick, uh, just be so blunt. Like I didn't even want to get out of bed. Um, but once I started doing podcasts, I'm like, oh, yeah, I really I really enjoy this. Like, let, let, let's see where this takes me. So, yeah, yeah having these. uh these interviews to me podcasting is therapy you know this is where you can actually get your thoughts out and right now even though it's just you and i but we're going to release this to the world but even when you do your own single interviews you're just talking to yourself and the screen and maybe mm -hmm. you got a couple of notes that's <laughs> it um and for a lot of introverts this is great but when it gets to, you know, the conferences and stuff like that, you meet around people and there's a lot of talking because I was even thinking about it to the point where I might just get business cards of like who I am, my talking points just directly <laughs> on the on the thing, who I am, what my show is about, name of it, all that fun stuff, because uh, it's a lot of talking. It's a lot. It is. It is. When we was at podcast movement, I was like, oh, my goodness, like. <laughs> Like especially having to do the same pitch of what I do for my podcast over and over and over again, like back to back to back. Oh man, it was, it was a lot, but good, great conference, great conference. I'm trying to plot on podcast evolution in Chicago. For going to Chicago. Okay, mm -hmm. I did enjoy. I can give you a heads up because I did do uh, evolutions earlier this year in 2024. Sure. Um, because I was speaking there and talking about the burnout for podcasters mm -hmm. and. I had to say, like, it's mostly suits in there. So I'm going to give you a heads up with that. Um, meaning it wasn't like how movement was, where there's a lot of podcasters, we get a vibe and everything like that. It's mostly the business side of the house. So they're looking for, like, hey, you doing the deal? Cool. What's the deal? And the deals were start off at 10K and then they move up. So you got Microsoft there, Google was there. Um, obviously, the podcast hosting platforms like Blueberry. Uh, Libsyn and so forth. So all of those guys are there. Um, most of the AI folks, everybody that's helping out podcasters yeah. to be successful on the back end, they, you're going to meet up with them. Sure. Okay. Appreciate the heads up. Yeah. So with the heads up in the futures, um, what skills or habits that's going to take you to that next level? <clears throat> I think for me, I just need to be a lot more focused and what i mean by focused i mean uh, sometimes i'm just very like i know what i need to do for the day and i know what i'm doing like right now but like all like different things pop up and it'll just like take my attention like so for example uh, i might be you know 
was looking at some videos for my uh, for my clients and I'm doing that and and then something else like maybe somebody emailed me uh, about like just I, I just get a random email so I'm like okay and so then I'll stop doing that and then I'll go to the email and then I'll go back to that so instead of like completing I, I need to complete the the tasks that I'm doing and then move on to the ne next task that's something that I, I need to start doing a lot more yeah, that's good that you are able to kind of pinpoint exactly that, um, that focus piece. Once mm -hmm. I figure it out, I'll definitely do an episode on that. Or if I find a psychologist, because, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things that um, that we all need to work on. Actually, you know what? I need to bring somebody back on the show because she does clean. She has a cleaning business because I was asking her, like, how do you clean a house within an hour? Whereas if I'm doing it, it's going to take me like three hours cleaning the same thing and i'm like because you know she was like well you mostly focus on the things where things supposed to go instead of just moving it out the way or just balk it together finish one room at a time and i was like oh mm. well i might have you come back on to do a deeper dive on how do you you stay focused so thanks for that idea for yeah. sure it helped both of us out like <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's what podcasting is for learn something Yes, sir. For free, too. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on that. Right. So um, is there anything that you want to leave the audience with before we dive into the final four questions? Uh, I would say to just really follow your passion. I think nowadays it's so easy for, for people to get caught up and trying to chase money or trying to chase status or whatever like at the end of the day you know what i'm saying everybody's gonna have their day eventually so you might as well n do what you want do what you love uh and so really just pursue what you're passionate about for real and it doesn't even necessarily mean oh you have to start a business but like if there's something that you really like doing just do that integrate that integrate it in your life somehow hey best way to leave it so you ready for the final four? Let's do it. All right. Question number one, what does wealth mean to you? To me, wealth means abundance. You can be wealthy in multiple ways. You could have a wealth of knowledge. You could have a wealth, a monetary wealth. Uh, just wealth, it just means abundance, honestly. And what was your worst money mistake? Oh, man. Worst money mistake? I would say the worst money mistake I ever made was when I was uh, uh, I was trying to day trade, right? And I ended up losing a lot of money, right? I lost probably like uh it was probably like four thousand dollars right and i was on cracking and i was doing 5x leverage no stop loss it was stupid ended up getting liquidated all that so and i was doing it uh my friend i was telling you about like we, we were doing it together so we were trading so i got liquidated he got liquidated and we came up with this brilliant idea of yo we were on five cracking only got 5x leverage if we get on buy bit like they got up to 100x leverage so what did we do 100x yes 100x <laughs> leverage You're, you will uh, you will get liquidated in a second but i mean we weren't we we, we didn't go that far but okay. we, we still far enough so what we ended up doubling down so i think i took what i think at this point like ten eleven thousand dollars put it in buy bit and decided that i was going to go on 25 X leverage. Keep in mind that I had no track record of being profitable at this point. So I don't know why I thought I, I can't. I went on YouTube. There was like the strategy that I was learning and da da da. And I was like, oh, okay, like this seems simple enough. Let me let me use this indicator. Okay, look at this red, green dot, blah, 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 buy. All right, cool. So I did that. And I'll never forget. We were on the phone when we did it. We put it, we put it in the order. <laughs> And when I, and I was like, all right, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be emotional and watch this. Da da da. Oh, I also no stop loss by the way, no stop loss. I put the phone down, and probably like 60 seconds later, he calls me back. And he's like, bro, look now. I'll go back to look. I'm just down astronomically, and so we over here just trying to see if you know if it's gonna reverse. Did not. So and so all in all, I probably lost like. 
twenty thousand dollars trying to trade cryptocurrencies um and i did it the wrong way so that was definitely my worst money mistake by far wow hey well i mean that explains why you listen and subscribe to a lot of other people get your education up keep it simple <laughs> i'm doing it right this time around right uh number three what is your favorite financial or non-financial book I don't really have uh, a favorite finance book. I'm more, if I'm being honest, I, I consume a lot more podcasts. Ooh, shocker, right? <laughs> I consume a lot more podcasts and uh, other content creators content way more than I than I do books. But a book that I'm re I'm rereading now, I've already read it, is uh, David Goggins' book "Can't Hurt Me," and I really like that. I, I really like that book because it really goes to show you like you could really do absolutely anything you put your mind to and that you are not. And more importantly, that I'm not unlocking my full potential. And if I'm being honest, as honest, well, that's one thing that, you know, I want to be able to say when my time comes is that I gave, I gave it my all and I reached my full potential. Uh, I don't I don't want to to be like, damn, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Like, I ain't trying to live my life like that. So I'm trying to to reread that to to really understand, um, you know, myself. And, you know, as 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 he says, you know, stay hard. So there you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Number four, what is your favorite dish to make? Um. Like I, I I'm I'm being honest, I'm not really a cooker like that. I can't I I ain't the best at, at throwing it down. But recently one thing I've been eating is a lot more chicken thighs. Like the dark meat it tastes significantly better than white meat chicken breast. So I've been taking those, cutting those up, making quesadillas out of those. Um so so yeah. That's that's been something I've been eating recently. All right. Uh let's see the last question of the show, which is where could people find out more about you? Oh, for sure. Uh, so I'm on, I'm mainly on, uh, Instagram. I'm very active over there every single day, which is at miles young blood TV. And that's miles with a Y. Uh, and then my, uh, YouTube, if you want to check out my podcast, it's, uh, miles, a young blood on YouTube. So cool. Well, thank you miles so much for coming through, dropping some knowledge, dropping your story on how you were able to become uh, who you are today and definitely I'll be watching and subscribing to see how far you go and would love to have you back on the show to even to talk about anything that's new that's going through you want to share with the audience um, and even if you made some mistakes you know we all learn from each other mistakes and that's the best way we can learn to get better because we don't talk about this stuff in our communities enough um, and I think that this is something that we can continue on having this discussion around mm. the dinner table especially with the holidays coming up absolutely man i mean that's really why i started my show because i wanted to not only highlight my journey but other people's journey and understand that everybody started from zero everybody started with just an idea and that idea came to fruition you just you just met that person when they were at their peak or hitting it or just now catching their stride but there, there's a story behind how they got there uh and, and most of the time the story wasn't oh they had a silver spoon in their mouth a lot of it was was a lot of hardship so i want i want to highlight people's hardships and i don't and i literally have no shame in sharing mine so yeah no, i greatly appreciate you sharing it with the audience today and with myself so with that everybody hopefully you all got something out of this episode if you did go ahead on and like share subscribe if you didn't go ahead on and share with somebody else they might like it next time so who knows what night what might not be for you will be for somebody else all right everybody <laughs> y'all be safe we out peace all right. Later. back in 2000 you recently graduated howard and has it been 2020 you said 2000. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking about my own self. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, don't tell you. Right. I ain't that old. Right. Uh, man, come on now. I mean, jeez. Hey, I ain't got no one, so I can't even tell you. <laughs>